when you have that belief that everyone that walks through your doors has the capacity to rise to whatever level they aspire to, and you make it known to them that you have that belief in them, and you're willing to work with them to develop them if they're willing to work, I think that's powerful. It really begins with making sure that you've got a strong culture. You win that war on talent in terms of retention if people want to be there. And in the restaurant business and much of hospitality, that want to be there is so important because it doesn't take a lot. The friction is pretty low for people to leave you, walk across the street and work for someone else. I came from a background where education was very important, and my parents were good students. Their educational attainment level was relatively low, but while they were in school, they were good students, and so they stressed it. It was very important. Uh, I went to school with people who were great classroom learners, and many of us went off to college, but I went to school with a lot of people that were not great classroom learners. That was not their best learning style and they went on into, fortunately for them, into areas where apprenticeship learning was valued, and they did very well. And I sort of got uh, separated from that as I got into my professional career, that first 15 years on Wall Street, everybody's a great classroom learner. That's how you sort of get into the schools that people come from. And so I lost touch with that other part, the folks that learned differently, and coming back into the restaurant business, I sort of reconnected with that, and I realized just how important it is uh, to have a range of different learning experiences so that you can match the diversity of learning styles that are out there. I think the CEO really has to step back and think about talent management and make sure that the entire leadership team sees talent management as one of their core responsibilities. And some people see that with executive talent management uh, and trying to fill that top 10% of their salaried workforce. You also have people that are sort of on a journey elsewhere, and a restaurant is a sort of means of getting there, but they fall in love with it, they fall in love with the opportunity, they, they stay in it, and it's your job to help them understand that they can stay in it. So it was always important for people to understand what the other people in the organization are doing. Even if that's not something that I need to know, uh, and some of those things that they're exposed to will trigger curiosity and ultimately passion. Many of them won't, but it really is about making sure that they're exposed to the range of options. At Darden, out of our 2,200 restaurants, each has a general manager. Half those general managers came up from the hourly ranks. So they started as hourly employees, became assistant managers, over time became general managers. The way we thought about it was we felt like everyone working in the restaurant had the opportunity to really advance and do something different. And so we were very intentional about making sure that anyone working in the restaurants could raise their hand and be part of the restaurant leadership team. And we had a very strong restaurant manager training program for those folks who did raise their hand. Uh, only a few hundred people a year took advantage of that out of 200,000. But the fact that it's available and that we live that really resonates with all the others that don't take advantage. They understand that we really are serious about their development. And so that drives engagement. People are really to put in that extra discretionary effort that goes above and beyond uh, what they're paid to do. And all of that then means lower turnover, and that's enormous savings. So I think you have to think about the ROE more expansively, is how I would, I would, I would say most people who are leaders uh, think about it. So when we talk
talk about core purpose at Darden. It was all about nourishing and delighting. Makes sense in our business, everyone that we serve. And so nourish and delight, certainly uh, from a nutritional perspective, but everyone includes the employees. And so we're thinking about our people and why are they at work? Some people are there uh, because they really need to provide for family. It's a great income. And that's what it's about. Other people, it's a path along a career journey. And so we want to make sure that we understand why are people there and the differences about why they're there and we're able to respond to all those differences. In Stride really is on to something as we think about the workforce. As I said, we've got a lot of people in our workforces that weren't well prepared in our public education system because it is geared to one learning style and that's a classroom learning style. And it wasn't that these people are terrible classroom learners, they're just average classroom learners. And so there are a lot of people working for us who are capable of more than they think they're capable of. And it's incumbent on us to take a look, understand people, and help them do more. And so when I think about Instride and their mission and what they do, sort of reimagining uh, educational assistance programs, making it more effective, uh, making it more multidimensional, so it's not just tuition reimbursement, that was exciting to me. Many of those things cross industries. And so there are certifications that really document for the outside world that this person has this expertise. And so I think really bringing more rigor to that process and having certificates and having people recognized for the expertise that they develop and having them aspire to get that expertise, I think that part is very important. I do see uh, a movement toward that in the corporate world. I think that's a great thing.